Hello everybody. In this video, I will show how we can connect an RGB or red, green and blue multicolor LED to the ESP running the XP Entrip Master so we can see what mode the Entrip Master is set to. And thus, while strictly not necessary for crypto mining or sending correction data, is still a nice feature to have for troubleshooting. So if you then take a look at the user interface of the Entrip Master, you can see that you have those colored boxes here and they determine the color of the RGB LED if you have it connected. So you can click on here and you can then choose whatever color you want. So right now it is a pure blue, but you can slide this little box to whatever color you want. You can also turn it more to the green. I kind of like to keep it a pure color, so 255 and the rest is zero. And of course, the same here is true for the Wi-Fi hotspot and for the ECP socket, which is a feature we have not talked about, but this will be part of my upcoming videos. And also, if you want one of those modes not to be indicated at all, you can actually set those here to black, and then this will be excluded from the indication. But let's leave this one here at red. And then if you either enable or disable one of those services here, you will see that your color LED now will indicate your enabled services. So after flashing white for a little bit, you see here in solid red that the hotspot is enabled. Also in blue, which here is pulsating, you see that the local network is enabled. And actually by the pulsating, you see that something is connected to it. And then here in solid green, you see the TCP port, which nothing is connected to as solid green. But as soon as I connect to the port, so I'm connecting here, you will see that the green light now also is pulsating, indicating that I have connected to the TCP socket. So all that is quite nice. And the reason for this video is that if you actually take a look at the GitHub page here, you can see that it is indicated what GPIO the various colors are connected to. However, the problem I ran into is that those ports are actively low and I assumed that they are actively high and therefore the colors I got did not make any sense. In any case, as soon as I figured this one out and I connected my anode to the positive terminal and my cathodes to the GPIOs, everything started to make sense. So if you then take a look at the connections you have to make and let me get out of the way so you can see properly, you have to first make sure you get a common anode RGB LED where the longest pin typically is the plus terminal. And this one you have to connect to your 3.3 volts. And then you have to connect your individual cathodes over limiting resistors, which can be between 100 and 1000 ohms, depending on how bright you want your LED to be to the various GPIOs here. So unfortunately, there is no real standard in terms of what lengths the different pins have. So you may, may have to play around a little bit to connect the correct pins to the correct GPIOs, but the, the longest pin always should be the anode. In any case, you can find those RGB LEDs for a couple of cents on Amazon or AliExpress. Unfortunately, you have to buy several of them at once. And of course, you also will have to buy a couple of resistors here, which are also very cheap. So go ahead, try it out and let me know in the comments whether you have been successful or ran into any difficulties. And also, if you're interested in setting up a GNNS correction base and send your data over the local network, those will be in my upcoming videos. So subscribe if you haven't done so, so you don't miss any. In any case, that's it. Give it a like if this was useful to you and consider subscribing. And I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.